Welcome to More Than a Budget, a podcast presented by Relational Media. Co-founders Jeff Fine Thomas, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and John Mitchell, a certified financial planner, combine the fields of psychology and personal finance to help couples improve their relationships and discover what is more important than money. I'm Jeff. And I'm John. And today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. Um, we're going to be talking about the idea of raising kids that are money aware. It's a big subject. It really is. I mean, Jeff, you and I have talked, uh, we've done so many of these episodes where we're trying to help couples um, kind of discover how it is that they think about money and help them communicate that to their partner, help them think about how it is that they're going to um, build shared values, how they're going to communicate about those things. Um, And so much of our past is such a mystery to us because we probably weren't told much about money. Yeah. Um, I think you've said on a couple occasions that money can be sometimes a bit of a taboo topic. Absolutely. It's a very interesting thing to recognize in my practice that couples will readily come in many times, not all the time, but many times, readily come in and talk about sex, but they will avoid talking about money. So, I mean, Can you tell me why? I think that there's more openness now about sex and sexuality and they're wanting to solve a problem around sex that's perhaps longstanding or, you know, it's affecting their relationship in a certain way. But money has been taboo for as long as I've been alive, at Mm -hmm. least in my family, there's a certain amount of taboo. I, I, I was, the other day I was watching a video that described this taboo. It like enacted this taboo right in front of me, it was on YouTube or something like that. And a couple actors were being interviewed and they were talking about their first big paycheck when they got, when they were, you know, really made it as Mm -hmm. actors. Right. What did they do with their paycheck? And one of the actors asked the other one, well, how much was your check? Mm -hmm. And there's of course laughter, but also like silence, Uh like the, the person who was, you know, potentially going to answer that question is like, I'm not going to answer that question. Like this is, this is a subject I am not going to talk about. And so there was this really palpable discomfort Mm -hmm. that was funny, Mm -hmm. but also to you. (laughs) Yeah, it was exactly right. But it was also an example of how we are just not permitted to talk up freely about our finances. And I think we'll feel the same way if you haven't had kids yet. Um, and if you do, you, you've noticed this phenomenon yourself is that, you know, that there's some boundaries about what you should share, what you can share. Maybe, you know, what do we tell our kids about money? Yeah. Um, very few people, you know, would leave their checkbook out and encourage the kids to look at where all the money goes. Very few people, um, have kids that know what, um, they make. That's right. You know, I don't need little Johnny at the school on the you know the school grounds knowing what I make. Yeah, my so mom and gonna, dad make X amount yeah, of money, right? Yeah, and and my kid's not a vault, so you know I'm not I'm not sharing that information, sure. right? So what we're not talking about is maybe that level of you know transparency. But I think we've all experienced this thing where, as we look back to how money is meaningful, the use of money is meaningful to us. We have found it really hard to put words to those things. And this podcast is really here to help people put words to those difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. But we're not just teaching you how to do it. We're hopefully putting you in a position where you can communicate those core ideas, those core processes of talking about what's more important in our family than money. Why do we make the choices that we make? You know, what, have your father or your mother and I chosen to do and why? Yeah. And seeing mom and dad talk about how they're going to use resources to do things is a very different experience than most of how most of us were raised. Yeah. I didn't know anything about how money went in my family growing up. And it wasn't that my parents were like being neglectful or anything. It's just that wasn't discussed. So I didn't know how tuition got paid for. I didn't know 
how, you know, food or clothing or vacations or any of that got paid for. But lucky for us, the school systems do such a great job of teaching. <laughs> <laughs> right. They don't. Right. So not even at school do we learn, A, about money at all, or B, about how to talk about it. Yeah. So it just becomes this big black hole. So, you know, what we're not trying to do when we're raising our kids is we're not trying to determine who they're going to be. Right? Whatever fantasy we have about what they should be, they need to be themselves, not we, what we wished they would be. So how does that play out? Jeff, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm kind of jumping on you here as a therapist, and you hate it when I do this. But, but what are some, I mean, aren't there kind of some tendencies? I know I felt it as a parent. I really want my son to do this. I really want my daughter to do this. I really think they have the aptitude, and so I'm going to push them into sports. I'm going to push them this way. I'm going to push them that way. That's not always in the cards that we play as to how they're going to turn out, right? No. I mean, I think it's always a tough thing for parents to be determining where they should offer some encouragement, where they see realistically what their kids are capable of and what talents they have, and where to nurture them in those ways. But also, we all know parents who force their kids to play violin or piano or play some sport or whatever, and that went horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. And the kid hated the thing for 15 years and is never going to play the violin again. Right. And resents mom or dad or both for making them do that. So what we're not talking about is we're not talking about, you know, talking about money with your kids so that they become money managers. We're not... We're not even really talking about investing. We're not really talking about being good savers. What we're really talking about is developing some basic understanding in a family situation that as a child in a family, my parents are making decisions based on things that they think are important. As I get older, they're interested in what I think. It may not go the way I want it to go. Yeah. But, but there's going to be communication about the partnership between yeah. resources and values in our family. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to see, you know, mom and dad communicate about resources and values and choices in ways that are constructive. Yeah, you, you have a special kind of connection that I think we're trying to point out. If, as a kid, you're able to see your parents cooperating around a set of values that they put their resources toward when you're a part of that common experience as a child that is meaningful Mm -hmm. right it it enriches your experiences a child to because you're a part of something that's bigger than you Mm -hmm. imagine if a couple said when they when they first started having kids that we're going to make a commitment to each other that we will never let our kids see us argue or disagree. If we argue or disagree, we'll do it in private. Do you think that could create any kind of an issue down the road? Yes. yes. I think, I think <laughs> what that creates is a sense that, A, there's not reality there, right? Like people have differences. And B, you know, what is the possibility that that kid's going to want to avoid conflict growing up? I'm not saying that's going to happen in 100% of the cases in which no I mean, parents have no arguments. I'm just saying possible downside. Mm-hmm. Your kid probably needs to see a healthy way of dealing with conflict. It might be a useful thing to be able to, you know, curate some of those a little bit so that they're not seeing the, the roughest of your conflicts mm-hmm. and so that they're seeing you problem solve in a realistic and healthy way. So when they eventually get into a relationship, they, can, they have a model in their head for how it might go in a healthy way. Yeah, you're kind of scripting some modeling. You're, you're scripting and modeling how it looks like to navigate some challenges that will be part of their future. Right. And that's really, I use that analogy as kind of really what we're talking about here when it comes to kids with money. Is, and, and we're also not just talking about money. We're talking about resources, Right. Families get so stretched on time. You know, we've got all these things that we're scheduled for. How did we choose these things? Why do we not choose other things? 
Um, how did that come to be? Was that all dad's idea? Is it always mom's idea? Do they really work together? You know, how does that get accomplished, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how do we share with others? Is that something we value? Mm-hmm. All of these types of things. And I'm thinking about, you know, people who are listening to this who have kids of varying ages, you know, you might be saying to yourself, boy, that's kind of daunting. Where would we start? Mm -hmm. Hey, guess what? We're going to use the exact same model that we use for everything that we've done up to this point. Mm -hmm. Um, We are believers in this system. Yeah. So the first thing might be to know your location, your current circumstance, your current circumstances. So I'm going to recommend that maybe on a date night, you and your spouse get together and write down an accurate inventory of what your kids currently know and think about how money works in your family. It's kind of an interesting question. You know, if you have kids of different ages, um, keeping in mind that as kids get older, they have different experiences because of where you kind of move to as a family. Mm -hmm. Maybe your income situation improves as you raise your kids. Maybe it goes the other way. So they're going to have different experiences. But write down for each kid kind of, well, what do, what do I think they currently understand about where we are? And this might take some sleuthing, like, you know, before that date night, have a little, uh, you know, conversations with your kids. Maybe notice what they think or don't think. Mm-hmm. Ask some questions and see what happens. Yeah. It could be really interesting. Yeah. So let's throw some of those questions out there for them as kind of some guidelines. Sure. What do you got? I'm kind of thinking of, you know, asking the kids, how do you think mom and dad choose to use our income? Why do we choose to do some of the things, pick some of the things that we do? Uh Maybe we always go to grandma's house for Christmas. Why do we do that? You know, it costs money and we get on a plane. Why do we do that? Sure. You know, we, why do we do kids sports? You know, why do we, and see if they can start attaching some of the family culture and reasoning to the way that we use resources. And obviously you're going to have to modify your questions for the age of the child, right? Correct. You know, some other questions I think are interesting to ask would be, you know, what do you think mom and dad save money for? Mm -hmm. Um, What do you think mom and dad feel about debt? You know, do you know what debt is? Yeah. Right? They might not even know. Yeah. Do you think mom and dad invest in anything? How do we make these choices? Yeah. Um, I think those are all, you know, fascinating questions. Um, I think you might be surprised at what your kids don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and that is kind of the beginning of, well, what do we want them to know? Okay, so what's next after that? I think, you know, what I would say is you want to create a plan together to help your kids to learn the skills and the attitudes that you guys are fighting for so hard right now to learn yourselves. So this is, you're a planner. Yes. And this is a planning comment. Correct. So let me say it this way. If you have had to struggle in your own relationship today to get on the same page financially, to get on the same page relationally, if this has taken some time and some energy and some tears um, to make improvement, what would you want for your kids as they get ready to move out of the house um, and to pair up with a spouse and start building their own life? Mm -hmm. Can we start giving them the foundation of these types of skills of how to communicate, Mm -hmm. um, how to talk about what's important to them, how to talk about choices? When we choose something, that means that something else can't happen. Mm -hmm. There's only so much time. There's only so many resources. So, how would that affect the way that you guys communicate to your kids when you say no? How does it communicate? How do you choose to communicate to your kids when you say yes about something? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're thinking about adding some whys. You're thinking about telling some stories. One of a very tiny example of this from our uh, family is that we have common, my wife and I have obviously done all of this, right? And we have common values. And one of the things we first did when we worked all of that out is we put it on a little note card Mm -hmm. in in colored pens and we put our common values on the fridge. Our kids are now out of the house, but that remains on the fridge. 
And we now have routine conversations. Mom and I uh, value education, let's say, or mom and I value, you know, ha- having meaningful work. Whichever one it is that comes up in conversation, we, we add that comment to the conversation so that they get a sense of how we're problem solving, how we're thinking, why we decide that this particular resource is going to be used in the service of our value and what the outcome of that is going to be. So hopefully what, what you're describing is a situation where your kids are kind of thinking one day I'm going to have a refrigerator and I'm going to have a spouse and on my refrigerator we will write down what our core values are. Yes, and, and I also think it worked out because I, I think one of the things we, we are sort of advocating is that we want to be creating opportunities for learning. Mm-hmm. And by having that placed on the fridge and in my mind, so I'm thinking about it. I'm looking at it routinely, and I'm thinking about it. And when a conversation with one of the kids comes up and that subject is able to be highlighted in the conversation nat- naturally, it's an opportunity for learning for them. I can then take in, and, and make that apply to whatever's going on in their life that's pertinent in that moment. Now, I don't know where all of our listeners are, obviously, with their kids, but I can tell you one of the things that you really want as your kids are moving out and starting their own lives, is you want the ability to be a positive influence for them as they go. You want to be able to share some hard-earned wisdom Mm -hmm. with them Mm -hmm. as they get older. And what one of the things that comes out of sharing this process is your kids get to see that you and your spouse put in a lot of work to decide how it is that you wanted to structure a life. They get to see that you were deliberate, that you were intentional, Mm -hmm. that there was a lot of discussion about how this was going to go early on. And so when they get into a relationship and they're saying, well, this obviously the best, the way that, the way that relationships were modeled in my life is there were some big choices that we made early. And then we kind of pushed for those. I'm having a hard time getting that going. I feel comfortable going back and asking more questions of parents who shared Mm-hmm. I think it's re- another thing I would add is that it's very important that when we're thinking about the subject you just gave, that we imagine how we're going to implement this in age appropriate spots. Mm-hmm. So I'm talking really now about my kids who are older and they're out of right. the house, but when they're five or seven or 10, they need that information in a different way. Mm -hmm. And we have to adjust how we're thinking in order to give them that information in a palatable way that they could metabolize and make meaning of. And I want to emphasize that it's important that this happen over time. It needs to accumulate. It can't just be a one-time conversation. It has to be many, many, many conversations, little ones, Mm -hmm. over the course of 15 years. Yes, lots of layers. Um, And that's how you kind of get to this point where somebody goes, well, this is the way it's done. Yeah. And, you know, to be able to launch kids who are going to enter into relationships that see that relationship as a purposeful way of building a life is a very different model than I think what many of us kind of naturally present to our kids about the future. Yeah. I mean, I hadn't thought about this before our work together. Mm -hmm. So the subject of money was haphazard. I mean, I I just didn't consider even having any conversations with the kids when they were little. So, you know, have a, have a date night, ask the question, what do our kids currently know? Um, What, what would we want for them that we've had to fight so hard to, to improve on ourselves? Think about what it means to share stories about financial decisions that you make that are age appropriate, um, that are, relationally appropriate Mm -hmm. um, and be thinking about constantly sharing with them the idea that life is about building something and in the future they will find somebody that they're going to build with as well. Mm -hmm. Those are all really important things to keep in front of us. Um, Just having that simple idea creates the opportunities, kind of exposes the opportunities to have those conversations um, and be raising kids that are kind of ready to take those next steps. 
Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave us a like, comment, or review. And tell your friends. New episodes drop weekly. Learn more about Jeff and John at relational-media.com. 